Muna naman sa inyong lahat, mga kapatid, mga, ka, mga kaibigan sa ating God's Word for Today devotional. At kumusta na po ko yung lahat at patuloy tayo sa ating daily devotional sa libro ng Juan. At dito na tayo sa John chapter 8 and let me read to you verses 15 to 20. Humahatol kayo ayon sa laman, ako'y hindi humahatol sa kanino man. At kung ako'y humahatol man, ang hatol ko'y totoo sapagkat hindi ako nag-iisa, kundi ako at ang ama na nagsugo sa akin. Maging sa inyong kautusan ay nasusulat na ang pagtutuo ng dalawang tao ay totoo. Ako ang nagpatutuo tungkol sa aking sarili at ang amang nagsugo sa akin ay nagpatutuo tungkol sa akin. Kaya sinabi nila sa kanya, nasaan ang iyong ama? Sumagot si Jesus, hindi nga ninyo ako kilala o ang aking ama. Kung ako'y inyong kilala, ay kilala rin sana ninyo ang aking ama. Sinaban ninyo ang mga salitang ito sa kabang yaman, yaman habang nagtuturo siya sa timplo. Subalit walang taong pumuli sa kanya sapagat hindi pa dumating ang kanyang oras. This is the fact and the reality that you have to accept. That if you know Jesus, you know the Father. That was the claim of Jesus. Ang fundamental problem ng mga Hudiyo is in their myopic and skewed perspective. They always evaluated the claims of Christ through the lens of the flesh. Kaya nga sinabi ni Pahing Jesus Christo sa kanila, you judge in the flesh. That was the basic diagnosis of their problem. Kaya nga, basing on this, it is important for us to realize that spiritual knowledge or understanding is initiated by Christ who is the light through the person of the Holy Spirit. Hindi po tayo makakilala ng Panginoon unless He illumines our mind through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They believe that Jesus' claim is in violation of the law. Yun ang paniwala ng mga Hudiyo. You violated the law of Moses. Kaya nga si Jesus ay nagsasabi sa kanila, In your law, it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. So ibig sabihin ng Panginoon Kristo na we satisfy the law. Kung kailangan dalawang witness, ang sinasabi ko, ako ang nagsasabi, ako ang witness, plus ang aking ama. But this one, they won't receive as they always don't receive his claim. Instead, he questioned him, where is your father? Now, this is interesting because matanong natin, did they deride him because they thought he was a son out of wedlock and Joseph was not his true father? Maaring ganun. Maaring kinu-question nila na sino, saan ba yung ama? Kasi Mary became pregnant while they were not yet together with Joseph. We don't know. It's not written in the scriptures, but we can speculate. So here, the key of knowing God is to believe in Jesus. That he is the one sent by the Father in heaven. That's the only key. This true faith will open the floodgates of understanding and knowing the Father. Simply put, Jesus is the revelation of God the Father. Hindi po tayo makakilala ng Ama maliban sa kanya. This is the very reason Jesus had stock of certainty to the knowledge of the truth when he said, I do judge, if I do judge, my judgment is true. Hindi po pwede ako magkamali sa aking mga judgment. Why? For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. Walang pagkakaiba ako sa aking ama. Kung ano ang paghahatol ng ama, Ganyan din ang aking paghahatol because I and the Father who sent me are one. When in fact he said in John chapter 10, I and the Father are one. In essence. So kaya mga kaibigan, mga kapatiran, 
let's remind ourselves this morning to believe in Jesus is the only key to knowing God. Siya na hindi nakakilala sa Panginoon is the one who kept refusing to believe Jesus, katulad sa mga audio. So we are challenged to believe the Lord Jesus Christ. For apart from Him, apart from believing Him, we will never know the Father. Hindi ba ganun sa gospel din? When we are going to share the gospel, when we are going to proclaim the gospel, we are going to challenge those who hear, the least and the lost, those who need the gospel, gospel, to believe the gospel more than understanding it. We are challenged to believe the gospel more than understanding it. Why? Because it's a good news. There are news that amaze us. There are news that we cannot really understand. There are news that are too deep for us to comprehend. But it's not, it's, it's, it's a news. It's an event. It's something that happened, an event that is proven by history, that Christ died for sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again. And Jesus is a historical event. Or Jesus' sacrifice at the cross is a historical event. And Jesus is a historical person. He was born and, and he proven by history that he existed. So the gospel is not an idea. It's not an opinion that we, we must understand. It is a truth, an event that we must accept. Let, let me close with this statement that the knowledge of God, this knowledge of God, is as the ocean too deep for the skeptics, like they are like divers who cannot fathom a deep ocean. But this knowledge of God is just like a swimming pool that a believing child can enjoy. I hope that we are like this child who believes in Jesus and we enjoy our knowledge of God. Good morning and let us pray. Father, thank you so much for another privilege, Lord, that we have read the word and understand it. And thank you that you are going to illumine this and use this to encourage our hearts, Lord, because that is what you intend for us to, to receive when we read the word of God, to know the truth. And this truth will set us free from any notions, anything that think highly or contrary to the word of God. We ask you, Lord, to guide us that we will not fall into the trap of the religious leaders who question the Lord Jesus Christ, but let it be that we will be believing, trusting the claims and able to experience that indeed we know God because we have opened our eyes to see you more even today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.